welcome back. So today we are going to machine an o-ring groove into this cylinder for the V twin as there is a race this weekend and I will take a GoPro with me. The o-ring in question is a 51mm Viton o-ring uh, so it's high temperature rated so it should be up to the job of sealing the cylinder head. I am also going to talk about the V4 cassette so I'm not really in a position to cast this at the moment but I will uh, remanufacture this so I'll explain that later on in the video so I can do the perfect casting the first time around. So this is a 51mm o-ring, it's 2mm thick and it's going to go on here. So the groove is going to measure 2.8mm wide, 1.68mm deep um, and I am going to stretch the o-ring by about 2% and that should give us about 2.5mm standoff from the cylinder bore which should be fine. And then I've got this o-ring, it's a 2.5mm o-ring. I got it in this size because it was cheaper. So if there's enough room, I will place this o-ring here, like so. And that will seal up the stud, which provides pressurised oil to the cylinder head. Um, if there's not going to be enough clearance, I won't worry about it. Because this and the tunnel are going to be sealed with some high temperature RTV. I'm going to do away with the, um, you can see it on here, the copper spray. As it's a bit messy and I don't think it seals as well as the RTV. Um, it doesn't take up as much of a gap. So here I have a 2 flute 2.5mm end mill. Uh, this was a few bucks from China. I've only got the one. From what I've read, the o-ring might fail in the corner from the sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is use a wet stone and put a slight radius on each edge. Now I know it won't be perfect, but it's machining fairly soft material, so it should be fine. I just don't want premature o-ring failure because of sharp corners. So all we have to do now is clean up the mill. So I haven't actually used this since the last video where I made the um, foam pattern. And I'll be making that pattern again because long story short, all the, um, I used a flat bottom, a flat bottom end mill and um, all the corners on it are square. Now, it might not sound like a problem, but when you've got something under a fair bit of stress um, all those square edges are likely where all your problems are going to begin so what I've done is I've ordered a ball nose end mill and I'm going to turn on some stock to leave um, and then from there once I've machined it all out I'm going to go around with the ball nose so the Every pocket has a nice little radius in the bottom, and that means um, the casting is going to be one uh, easier to cast, and two less likely to uh, crack in the corners should we have any problems. So, how we're going to set this up? I am going to. Oh, there's a couple ways. I think the easiest way is going to be to use the chuck off the lathe. So I'll just whip the chuck off. What are we looking at? Some 6mm Allen keys. Easy peasy. These are a bit horrible to undo as well because you can't um, you can't use the ball end really from any of the angles. Oh, nah, not really. Um, but yeah, so oh, what's today? Today's the um, 8th. So this Sunday, coming, seeing as today is Sunday, there's a race on, which is quite good. Yeah, so we'll be able to race the V-twin. So I've asked my mate David 
I don't have a six mil. I used to do. Um, yeah, I've asked him if I can borrow his um, GoPro. So that should be quite good for um, getting some footage of the V twin. We should be able to. I'm sure a few of you want to hear it go. That would be quite exciting. I could have obviously taken the whole chuck off and um, put it on parallels and left the uh, threaded part there for the spindle but this way it'll sit flat on the mill table it'll probably be a more solid uh, surface so there we go it's not really it's pretty dry really I should give it a oil after that bit of wood's been sitting on there because that bit of wood would have been um, sucking up all of the long life that was on there. So here's the setup. It looks pretty good. Obviously I could add another clamp, but it is a very light duty cut being a two and a half mil end mill. So here's my janky setup. It's just the stem off my um, dial indicator base. And what I've done is I've put my DTI in there and moved it around until the um, pointer doesn't wobble. So it's within um, 0 0.01 millimeters of center, which is good enough for this, seeing as the spindle probably has more run out than that. Um, so I'll check it one more time. Yeah, and it's sitting around 22. Um, the whole way around floats between 21 and 22. Close enough. The original audio didn't record for this bit, but I was just going to talk to you about how when I first converted this mill, I was going to make some aluminium pulleys for this belt. But these nylon ones have done pretty good over the last couple of years, even though one of them is slightly eccentric. You can see how the um, belt goes tight and slack. Not by much, but just the tiniest bit. Nice and slow. Yes. And you can hear it for yourself, that sounds terrible. So it's probably because I did that horrible uh, radius on the end mill. It could also be because it's cutting between cast iron and aluminium. So it's sort of got a different load on the cut. Also, why is the flute length so long on the end mill? That does not help. It only needs about two or three millimeters of flute length. So I got to here and the end mill snapped. Well, that didn't go to plan. So I had this random tool. It's been sitting in my toolbox for years. I've never needed it, but it just happens to have this insert, which I it had a rounded end, but I ground it off square gave it a little bit of relief and now I am cutting the groove on the lathe and without putting it in the four jaw chuck there's still a little bit of run out in the realm of 0.15 millimeters but seeing as the previous cut was quite shallow it should clean up okay so despite all that um yeah we got the o-ring groove done it's to depth and this is the o-ring in the groove there is a teeny tiny bit of chatter on the bottom of the groove uh, it looks worse than it is. Nothing it looks worse than it is. Nothing really picks up on it. Um, other than that, and there's that little divot there, which I'm going to give a light, a um, little bit of a light sand. I think that's from where the 
from that's from where the tool broke so I've wiped everything down very clean um, the cylinders on I gave it a quick lap on a piece of glass same with the head that's had a quick lap so it should be about as flat as I'm gonna get it at home um, I've brake cleaned still sort of see the brake clean residue on there um, I've brake cleaned the hell out of them so the next thing to do is I'm going to apply some high temperature RTV around the cam chain tunnel and the oil galleries pop the o-ring in while I was putting this all back together this time I was thinking to myself now that I've got the CAD model sort of fully refined and I wasn't too happy with the fact I didn't heat treat this casting like it works fine but it's not as strong as it could be and I'm sure some of those bolts aren't as tight as they need to be because otherwise the threads might strip out so thinking about it I could probably make another one in I don't know a fraction of the time seeing as half the machining I did was to make space so things didn't interfere with each other but yeah so I'm thinking about maybe making another one but if I do go that route I was curious there probably isn't a market for it but I, I would be curious if anyone would be interested in purchasing cases now at this stage I don't know what they would be worth I have purchased um, some tapered end mills so I could make a MDF pattern this time and they could just be cast and cast and cast I wouldn't have to machine foam anymore but um, if this is something you're interested in if I get enough people interested I will probably get a quote and make up a pattern but I'm not sure what people would be interested in or if they're even interested in general if they'd want a blank set of cases with instructions or um, some fully machined cases for the second prototype I think I'm going to go with a aircraft style um, master rod and slave rod so the benefit of this will be you can use stock cylinders stock crank pin and um, there'll be no special parts other than the con rod and the engine will also be narrower so it'll almost be the stock width there'll be a couple extra mils there for the wider rod but yeah essentially it will be a custom con rod and instead of a custom crank pin and that means you won't be running the rods side by side and one of the cylinders won't need to be offset 14 millimeters so I'll look at doing all of this after um, I start on the v4 castings but if that's something you're interested in just let me know